Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in CSS and today we're going to learn how to create both horizontal and vertical navigation bars as well as submenus for those navigation bars. So if you look here on my website uh, you can see here I have a vertical navigation bar and when I hover over the ones with the arrows uh, these little submenus pop up so I'm going to show you how you can go about making one of these as, as well as a horizontal one that will have drop down menus as well. Um, so yeah so this is the web page and let's get started. So we have nothing there in, in order to create one, create some sort of list and those and this will be a list of links. So you can use either an ordered or an unordered. I'll use an unordered list. That's typically how people will make them. And inside one of these we're going to create a list element. Now, whoops. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to put the next L I on the, on the next line. You'll see later why I'm doing that. So first, I'm going to create a link here that will go absolutely nowhere. And inside that, I'll call it link1. I don't know, and that could be your home page or something. And each one of these will be its own link. So I'll paste, paste, and paste. So that's going to be link2. Uh, link3. And link 4. There we go. So I'll click Save All and let's refresh the page. And there we go. There's our four links. Uh, not so much for a vertical navigation bar, though, huh? So, oh yeah, that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to make a vertical navigation bar, then a horizontal navigation bar. And I find making vertical navigation bars easier while making vertical or, or while making submenus for vertical navigation bars to be more difficult than horizontal drop downs. Uh, so either way it's the, it's the same difficulty because they both have one thing that's easier and they both have one thing that's harder. So all in all it's pretty much the same difficulty. Um, so first of all let's give a class to this UL. Um, class equals and I'll just call it nav for navigation. And then our default.css I'll throw in uh, dot nav. And let's give some traits to this thing shall we? Uh, so the first thing I'd like to do is get rid of the list style type. So no more bullets. So I'll make that a none. Then the next thing I'd like to do is padding. So uh, first of all, let me show you border. Because I want to show you why I'm going to mess with the padding. So I'm going to go border and, uh, what was the first thing? Uh, solid. Uh, one pixel and let's make it black. And then semicolon. So if I click save, uh, that should show what I want so far. There we go. Okay, so as you can see here, you can make the width whatever you want, and we will modify the width of this box. But notice how there's padding right here. There's also padding on this side as well. So it's the same amount too. I'm not quite too sure what it is. It might be about 50 pixels. That looks looks like what it is. But let's get rid of the padding on both sides. So padding on the left will make it zero pixels, and padding on the right will make zero pixels and that should only get rid of the padding on one side. The padding on this side disappeared too, but you can't tell because it automatically extends to the end of the page. You would see it more clear after you applied a specific width, which let's make it 100 pixels. And I'll save that. There we go. And uh, is that about all I wanted to do? And that seems to be about, um, I actually wrote this down, so border, width, padding, list style type. Yeah, that looks like all I wanted to do. The next thing I want to do is actually work with the links. So uh, let's work with the links next. So I'll go uh, a.nav. Nah, you know what? I, sh I shouldn't be doing it that way. I should go uh, .nav with an a at the end. So right there. There we go. That's how I want it to be written. So .nav a, so the links. So what we want are the links. First of all, we're going to want to get rid of the de text decoration we don't want any underlines or anything like that then for the color let's give it our own color shall we let's give it a color of red is that alright I don't know uh, that's all that came to my mind and you know what that's all I want to do for now there's one more thing I'm gonna do but I don't want to show it yet so I'm gonna refresh the page and there you go now the links are red but notice how if I go away from one of those links notice how my cursor is no longer highlighted anymore it's not a pointer but it's a pointer on the link, but not off it. In order to solve that problem, if you want each link to take up its whole box, you can type in display, followed by none. 
So I click save and refresh. And, oh, not display none. Oh my gosh. Display block. My bad. I don't want it to disappear. There, there we go. See, see how it's now a pointer all the way across? And you can actually modify. Uh, you can put a border borderline between each one if you want. I think if I did it here, if I went border top or something, maybe I could go hmm, solid black one pixel, something like that. I think that would work. Uh, okay, so I would just have to modify that one up there, make that one go away. But other than that, um, that's pretty much if you wanted to add that. That kind of looks ugly in my opinion, though. I don't even want to. I don't want to add an, uh, a border there. I could actually, you know what? I could add in that border, and I think I could get rid of this border if you wanted to solve it really quickly. I think this would be it. Uh, oh wait, no, not border top, just border. Click save and there you go. That's another way. Oh, but th that's still there. So you still have to fix that. You have to do margin. So you'd have to do margin bottom or something like that. Margin bottom and make that a negative one pixel. And I think that, that will solve everything. There you go. That solved everything. So, but I don't want to do it that way. I, I don't want either of these to be here. Uh, actually, I'm going to cut this. Cut it and go back a couple here and throw this back up there and click whoops click save and there we go back to the way I want it and yeah that's it so let's mess with how it looks when we hover over it shall we dot nav a colon hover and if we mess with uh, when we hover uh, what we'd like it to do well let's change the position Th now this well, you know I'm not gonna do that yet Let's just mess with the hover for the links first. So all we're going to do is change the background color to ba 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 ba. What should we change the background color to? I think we should change it to beige. There we go. So I can click save and refresh the page. And there you go. Now you can actually see a difference when you go over one of these links. And they can all be different links now. Uh, so how about actually going about creating submenus? Or in order to create a submenu, just go in uh, back here into your index file and the reason why I put these LIs on two different uh, two different lines is because you're gonna have to throw in your another list in between these list elements for the parent list uh, so uh, let's go between inside link 2 let's do hover into link 2 shall we so I'll go in here and let's create another unordered list and then within here, I'll throw in more list elements. So that's going to be li, a h ref to nowhere. And I'll call it sub1. And I'll end li on that line. So, because I'm not going to have any more. Move this li to this line and throw in more lists if you want to go even deeper, if you want a submenu inside submenus. But I'm just going to keep it like this. I'm not going to go that many. And I'll throw in three, so sub one, sub two, and sub three. So I'll give this another class of its own and call it uh, submenu. There we go. So I'll click save and refresh the page, and there it is. But that's not how we want it to display, is it? So in order to change it, we're just going to go in here, and then uh, the first thing I'd like to do is actually type in dot nav. Uh, followed by, so we're still going to work with the main navigation and when we hover over a list element. So this is something that we're going to have to modify now. And first of all, the position will be relative. So basically it's going to make the position of the, the, the submenu when you hover over one of these relative. And that will come into play later. And now that we're working, working with uh, backgrounds, background colors, we can actually uh, move this here. You can, uh, whoops, you can you can just keep this in here and not even use this if you're gonna use submenus. If you're not gonna use submenus, then you would just put it back in here. But this this way you can just use submenus to click save and refresh the page and uh, there you go. So that, don't worry about this. This will change in in a moment, so don't worry. So it looks like it's wrong, but it it won't be. First of all, we have to make this disappear. Okay, so after all that is gone, type out ul. And then after the unordered list, we want to access the submenu. So I could have just typed in dot submenu, but 
I like typing in UL just to just in case I call something else submenu, even though I shouldn't be. Let's change the display to none. And let's change the list style type, because we can still see the list style type there, can't we? We want to make that none. And whoops. Um there we go. And then the next thing we'd like to do is again with the padding on the left and right. You know what? I'm gonna Yeah, that's that's right. I don't want I don't want to keep copying and pasting this. There we go. Or I don't want to keep typing it all in. And there's actually one more thing I need to show you. Uh, uh a, a kind of a side effect of making submenus is when they pop out, you might still if it pops out on top of an image or text, you might actually see the stuff that's on the main page, the text and whatnot, going through it. Like you might actually see text going through the block, and that would look really really weird. So add in a Z index that will solve your problem and whatever has the highest index will overlap anything else with lower index indices pretty much everything by def I don't know if there's any default I'm going to assume that it default indexes is zero but if you just give it an index of one you won't have to worry about it it'll any any sub menu will overlap anything else that's on the page so it looks nice so I click save refresh the page it should look a little better and there we go so nothing happens when you hover over this Ooh, I got an email probably junk mail anyways. So let's actually change it so when we actually hover over that uh, element. So I'll type out dot sub menu followed by the list element and when we hover over it. So when we hover over a list element basically, what will happen to the sub menu? Well the first thing we want to do is change the display from none to block. So that's actually visible. And we're going to keep it a block instead of inline which is the default because we want the links that are inside it to go all the way across to the end. So that's why we're using block instead of inline, which is the default. Uh, then we're going to do the mess of the border. And I believe that would be the same. So solid, black, and one pixel. So as you can see, I'm using the shorthand for the borders. And then we're going to do a position. We're going to make it absolute. And left, let's start with zero pixels because I want to see, I want to show you what happens. And zero pixels. And a width of let's give it 75 pixels I think that would be enough so I click save and let's see what happens when you hover over this oh nothing uh oh so uh, I got everything oh you made me look really quickly uh, oh whoops sorry wrong side let me cut this and that's supposed to be on that side so control V there you go click save and that should uh, do everything for me and there it is okay so there's the sub menu there we go okay so now we have to actually move this thing around so let's move it uh, a little bit further 100 pixels I think that should be the same the whatever however whatever, whatever the width is up here I for the navigation bar itself I think you need to move it over so 100 should be perfect there we go see 100 is perfect right there so there you go that's pretty much it and from here you this is all I'm gonna really show you for that but um, you can style it any way you wish from there and you can make more if you wish from that point um, so there you go since you can see it only does for the number two now let me move on to the next uh, bars I want to show you so that's gonna be I'm actually gonna start from scratch uh, that's gonna be horizontal bars this time so everything here should still look like that it should you know what let me cut this for a moment let me you know what no I'm gonna comment it out instead so like that, whoops. And down here, uh, is that? Oh, I already forgot how to cancel out a comment. No, oh, yeah, that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna comment that stuff out. The sub menu. So if I go back, uh, I should only see this. Yeah, yeah. There we go. That's what I want to see. Okay, so now we're gonna actually try to make it horizontal. And there's a reason why I did this after the float tutorial. Remember the float tutorial? I showed you how if you made something float, like maybe this element right here, uh, whatever you added on next, whether it floated or not, would go right next to it instead of down below. Well, the same thing can work for lists. If you make all these float, then this will be right there, then two will end up there, then three will end up there, and then four will end up over there. So they'll be side by side. 
So going back in here, let's actually start over and just learn how to make a horizontal navigation bar before we get into submenus. But the submenus are much easier for the horizontal navigation bars. While setting up horizontal navigation bars are a bit more complicated. Okay, so first I'm going to type out dot .nav. And then inside here, I'm going to do the same thing as before, list style type, make it none. And again, we have to do the padding left and the padding right. And there we go, so padding left, padding right. And then the, what I'm going to have to do next, I'm going to have to do the text is, um, oh yeah, text is centered probably. So I'm probably going to want to go text, align, is that what it was? Yeah, center. So if I click save, let's see how this looks so far. Okay, so now everything's centered. It doesn't have any of that other stuff, but it's still not uh, the way we want it to look. But it's not supposed to look like that yet. Um, that's when we're, we're going to have to actually modify the elements. I don't want to modify the links. or the, uh, the reason why I'm not going to float this thing is because this is the entire navigation bar. I want to actually float not the individual links, but the individual list elements, the li tags. So um, dot .nav followed by li and let's now float everything to the left so I click save and let's see how that looks there we go now everything's well right side by side right, right after link one there's link two well what we can do is actually give width to each of the elements each of these each of the different uh, what do you call them list elements so I'll go width and let's give them each 100 pixels. So I'll click save and let's uh, open this up. There we go. And from here, I actually did this in, in when I was practicing. This, ac I, this actually happened, uh, I did this in the links, but I'm starting to think I shouldn't do this inside the links. I should do this inside the element tags. And that's actually styling these different boxes. So I changed my mind. I'm going to do them right here. So I want solid, right? One pixel in black. And what else do I want? I'm going to want to margins, text decoration. Yeah, let's do text decoration here. I guess I don't have to do that with the links. I think I can just do it from here. I think that would suffice. So if I click save to all of that, let's just see how that looks. Uh, okay, so I do have to do these guys with the links themselves. So I'm going to cut these and let's actually go into our link next. So dot nav followed by a. So it didn't work the way I was hoping for, but we can just modify the links from in there. And there we go. So we, now we have all of our individual links in there. And you see how it's really bold right there for some reason? Why is that? Well, the reason for why it's so bold right there is because we have one pixel on one side, at the you know, this guy right here, and on this side basically so does that kind of make sense we have it, it, this is two pixels thick right there we have one pixel and a second pixel so it's twice as thick as all the others uh, because they're side by side so in order to solve this uh, let's actually go back up here I think I should be uh, messing with the margins right here it's for the list elements so I think back here I can go margin left is that what I want to do uh, let's go margin right and make it go back one so let's make it go negative one pixel and I think that will solve everything. There we go. So now everything's all perfect and nice, and they're nice little boxes. So is that all I wanted to do in there? Uh, no, I wanted to display block again, just like in the, just like before, because we want the links to go all the way across. So if I click save. Notice how it's not a link right here, but if I press F5, now it's a link on either side, and you can kind of see the cursor flash a little bit right. There. Maybe not really, but it it'll flash and display block is all I wanted to do there uh, yeah that was it yep that was everything so any further you, you know creativity that you have you can do don't worry uh, I'm sure you know a whole lot more than you know than I can probably show you anyways so now it's to actually hover over the links so you go dot nav a hover and let's change the background color so I'm gonna make it beige again just because it looks nice on white. So I click save. Now each one changes colors when you hover over it, so that's really, really nice. You can change the link colors themselves if you wish. A lot of websites do that. And yeah, that's it. 
So now next are the submenus. So that was the complicated part. Submenus with horizontal navigation bars are actually really simple. So the first thing we're going to do is, uh, first of all, we need to actually uncomment these guys here. And uh, there we go. So I click save, and now let's access the submenus. So let's talk about submenu. And the first thing we want to do is have display none, because we don't want it to display by default. Uh, as we learned from the last time, the list dial type goes back to bullets. So we want to make that a none again. And the last thing we need to do is the padding again, since the pixels... Oh yeah, we don't have to do... Oh wait, yeah, they are right here. So let me just copy these, just to expedite this, because I'm really over time. This is one of my longest tutorials for any web development. Sorry about that. And that was it. And then the last thing we need to do is li hover. This time I'll remember to put it in the right order. Then submenu and display as a block when we hover over it. That is it. This should do everything that I want it to do. So I press F5 and if I hover over this one, ah, there we go. So now everything hovers. So it kind of goes over with the colors here. So that's just a little minor things that you guys could probably fix. Um, I know this isn't, isn't completely perfect right now, but you know, you can mess with the border colors, you can mess with everything that you want from that point on. So you can move, um, if you want the text on these to go back to that side, so I could probably do that. Um, could I do that? I think I can do that. Text align. That should be a quick fix. Let's just try fixing this up a little bit. There we go. So now that's on that side, so that should look a little bit better. Uh, we could probably change the border. Uh, where is the border? Oh, I don't have a border on this. It's it's uh, it's inheriting the borders from the navigation bar. That's what it's doing. It's inheriting. But you could probably fix that yourself. That probably won't take long. Probably just a couple minutes at most. Uh, so yeah, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. And uh, yeah, this is definitely something you want to learn how to do. And well, i see you next time.